Seven days ago, a bright orange flash of light lit up a section of the night sky in Ecuador's Galapagos Islands. A volcanic eruption had begun and lava could soon be observed flowing down the southeast section of the shield volcano which comprises Fernandina Island. It is now day 8 of this ongoing eruption and it is still going strong but has decreased in intensity. This decrease can be roughly reflected by the amount of sulfur dioxide gas the advancing lava flows have produced every day, which declined by 88.9% in the first 100 hours. What started as 10 simultaneously erupting vents along a circular fissure 3600 meters in length has declined to only one singular vent. All the active lava flow this vent is producing is currently between 5 and 5.5 five and kilometers away from Fernandina's summit, and older now cooling lava flow produced during the first two days reached 8.3 kilometers away from the same vent. Regardless, the advancing lava flows are still proceeding down Fernandina's slopes in the same general south to south southeast direction, albeit at a lower rate due to both decreasing magma supply and decreasing slope. Altogether, a total of 7.68 square kilometers or 2.97 square miles have been covered in a layer of lava which, as a whole, is likely between 2 and 5 meters thick. This means that if we were to take the average eruptive rate during the first 5 days of Fernandina's eruption, we would get around 46.3 cubic meters per second. Luckily, the island is completely uninhabited by people, so there are no structures at risk, and despite the population of wildlife on the island, I would personally not be too worried. Fernandina is not only the most active volcano in the Galapagos Islands, erupting about once every seven and a half years, but also the entirety of its landmass has been covered by a lava flow in the last 4,300 years. In other words, since unusual species like the only tropical penguin in the world, comorons and iguanas have survived as a species its past eruptions, they will be fine with this eruption as well. This is despite the fact that the ongoing eruption is the most voluminous the Fernandina shield volcano has produced in at least 30 years. Here is a quick comparison to the six other eruptions which occurred in that time span. Although we do not yet have an official figure for the current erupting rate of the Fernandina volcano, I would not be surprised if the effusion rate had dipped below 10 cubic meters per second. Although it is nearly impossible to predict how long this eruption will last, I suspect that within the next 7 days this eruption will cease. As, much like Mauna Loa's eruptions in Hawaii, lava effusion starts out the strongest in hour 1 of the eruptive episode before subsequently slowly declining over time. This occurs until the effusion rate drops below 3 cubic meters per second and the eruption ends. The average eruption at Fernandina lasts 5.5 days, but the middle 80% of eruptions last anywhere from 1 to 101 days in length. In my last episode, a number of viewers were curious as to why the Fernandina's volcano's eruptions have largely occurred from circumferential fissures which surround the caldera and if this feature is unique. These features can form via two methods, sometimes a combination of both, caldera subsidence and edifice loading. Sometimes caldera collapse events, which in the case of the Galapagos Islands are caused by large volume flank eruptions, also create large stress fractures parallel to the direction which subsided, often just beyond the edge of a caldera rim. Or, at the thickest part of the volcano, the sheer mass of the edifice causes some of the weight to be transferred outwards to rock experiencing less strain downslope, creating cracks. These points then act as a path of least resistance for magma to intrude into. While these types of fissures can be found at almost every Galapagos volcano, they can also be found at other volcanoes such as Reunion's Piton de la Fornes volcano. As a final note, I would like to thank my new channel member, Michelle Curry, for supporting this channel.